Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some more Spyro the Dragon. Uh, I thought you might want to see what the um, menu screen looks like when you resume because I didn't show that in the previous video, so we're starting from here. In future videos I'll probably just start from in-game rather than starting here. Uh, you get this save slots option, you get continue, when you go to continue it looks like this, so it's pretty cool. Reminds you which world you're up to, how much progress you've made in each game. I haven't played these ones at all yet, obviously, so... Well, we'll see what they do in a while. <laughs> anyway, we're up to Peacekeeper's World. Uh, the adventure continues. The original Spire of the Dragon did exactly that when you resumed a save file, so it's nice that they've kept that little detail. Um, just like in the original, you can't skip ahead, you've got to wait for this thing, which is a bit annoying, but it's manageable. Wow. Wow, it's very quiet. Very quiet. There we go. Now, we've already got a lot of gems from um, enemies here at the beginning, so they'll mostly be dropping pearls when we attack them now. As you might remember, I was doing this in the last little bit of the previous video. Oh, the memories. This game is so beautiful. Uh, let's head for Dry Canyon, I guess. Let's go do a level. In the original game, the screen didn't flash white when you jumped into a portal like that. I'm not sure why they changed that. It might have made it easy to implement certain things. It's not a big deal, though. Do a barrel roll. The load times are a little bit longer in this version, I think, than they were in the original. It's not a big deal, it's a little annoying though. There we go. Okay, we got one of these things again, so you just play them a couple times. Gem pops out, easy peasy. Uh... I don't really remember the levels from Peacekeepers nearly as well as the levels in the Artisan's World. So it might take a little while before I acclimatize myself to the situation here. We should be fine though. Unlike Crash, Spyro takes three hits out of the box because of Sparks always starting gold. Uh, which makes things a bit easier. Uh, in terms of surviving damage, that kind of thing. You can flame these guys with the shields if you aim yourself just right. Uh, another, another one of these egg thieves here. Come here, friend. I need that. Ah! Okay, yeah, touching the purple stuff hurts, so don't do that. I'm not a big fan of the way we have facial features on the thief now. It looks a bit racial stereotypy. Uh, in the original game, you just saw his eyes, um, because he's wearing, you know, a big hood. Uh, here, you can actually see his face a bit, and it feels a little... bad. <sighs> hmm... I don't know, I'm not, I'm not super comfortable with the way they've designed the, the dragon thieves in this game. Dra egg thieves, whatever. Those guys. The guy I just chased. Because, yeah, you can see his face pretty clearly. Conan? Is he a barbarian? Thank you for releasing me, Spyro. Sort of. That's all he has to say. Yeah, a lot of the dragons don't really have any hints, so they basically just say thank you for releasing me and then leave. That's not new, that was in the original. Um, I think all the dragons so far have had act the same stuff as before, except the one that said right stick instead of the, the L buttons or whatever. Uh, which is a fine change to make, since they're supposed to be accurate game hints. Uh, that guy sends out the crows towards you, so you got to watch out for that. Be a little bit careful. 
It's not too tricky to do something like that, though. There we go. It's interesting that red is the smallest kind of gem in this game, whereas in Zelda, red is one of the larger kinds. And green is the smaller one. I'm not sure why they've designed it that way as opposed to being consistent with the other game, but, you know, they're different games from different people, so they didn't have to be consistent. Uh, we're going to be doing a bit of gliding over there shortly. Uh, we will want to talk to this fellow. It's Boris. Right, He's got a rope. Rewards good gliders. You are a good glider, eh, Spyro? I was... Born to glide. <laughs> God, Spyro is so cute. <laughs> but yeah, we have to glide from over here to reach all these other platforms. Um, we'll do that shortly, though. There's some more, some more stuff over here I'd like to grab. Get a purple from that guy. Also an extra life. Lives are pretty much meaningless in this game. Um since you don't really lose anything when you run out of lives. You get reset at the beginning of the hub world, but that's very rarely a significant amount of progress because you don't actually lose any of the things you've collected. Unlike, say, Banjo-Kazooie, where you have to start getting notes again unless you already got all 100. Or, um... Another game that has lives be meaningful. The side-scrolling Mario's. It, it's pretty much as meaningless as in Mario 64. It resets you to the, the the hub, but it doesn't matter that you go back to the hub because it's easy to get to anywhere you want to be. Especially because this this version has fast travel to everywhere. Like, it was a little harder to get to places in the original version because of the lack of fast travel, but it wasn't even wasn't especially tricky to begin with. So I don't know. Okay, I think we're done about done over here, so let's head back to that gliding point and try some gliding. How are we doing, by the way? Um, we're about halfway. Cool. I believe when the fairy zaps you like that, that is a save of sorts. Uh, they didn't do that in the original version of this game, but I know in Enter the Dragonfly that's how they worked. That was the, um, fourth game after the trilogy, and apparently it's not very good, but I did play a little bit of it. I didn't play much. You had to collect dragonflies in that game, and you had to get them by using bubble breath, which seems pretty annoying, really. Uh, let's head back this way so we can do some more gliding. Well, in the later Spyro games, you get a couple of extra, like, flight moves. You can do a little extra flutter to gain some height, but you can't do that in the first game. Uh, and you still can't do it in this version of the first game by the looks of things. Yeah, Do doesn't seem to be an option that I have at my disposal. Which is a bit sad. Uh, down here we can get some more of these little jumpy gems. Oops. There we go, easy peasy. That's why you shouldn't move your shield out of the way to shoot me, fools. <laughs> I was born to glide. Yeah. <laughs> Spyro is such a dork. Spyro is a very talkative character, which is interesting because a lot of platformer protagonists are basically silent. Uh, but Spyro's got a bit of an attitude. Kinda like Sonic, actually. Although, Spyro's not quite as quick as the blue blur. Give me that gem, yeah. It's actually harder to get gems if you run out of health because Sparks helps you pick them up normally. But if Sparks is gone, then you have to pick them up yourself. And I imagine in this version, you also can't get sparks to show you where gems are with the twirly thingy if sparks is gone. Which is an interesting addition to the mechanics, I suppose. I mean, I'm assuming that. I haven't had sparks go on long enough to try it out. Uh... 
Get another dragon. Ivor. You've got a bomb there. Yep. Yeah, probably. We've known, uh, you've known, uh, I forget. That was very informative. I can't remember if that's the same thing that dragon always says, which is a bit ironic if you think about it. <laughs> uh, I think the stairs were on this side, right? No, no. They were on the other side the whole time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. We want to glide over there as well, because we can see that there's... Uh, this box of fireworks has a gem stuck in it, so you want to fire it and then run away, because the exploding fireworks can damage you. There we go. Easy peasy. Another box of fireworks up here. And then some uh, fireproof chests there. We don't want to drop down there just yet. We might in a bit. Uh, first what we want to do is glide over there. Okay, I can see a locked chest. I know we don't have the key yet, so... Oh dear. That's not good. Yeah, apparently whenever you die it shows this reigniting cutscene, which is interesting because the original game did not do that. And didn't have like a different word or anything, it just didn't do that. At all. So that's that's a really weird change. I'm not sure why they've added that there, it's kind of annoying. Uh, okay, I'm pretty sure you can glide over there, so let's just give it another shot. Uh, I do need the key though, so maybe I should go look for that first. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Just made it. Okay, so we can get that. We can get this. Yeah, we can't open that one because we have the key. Hmm. Forget where it is. Uh, I guess we'll go look for it and then come back. Uh... Let's head back through this cave over here. Oh, this music. The nostalgia. <laughs> uh, was there anything here? No. Nope. Cool. Uh, I can see there's a fellow up there who might want to be attacked. He's a little bit too high up to glide to, I think, though. Well, maybe. Hang on, let's give it a try. Nah. Okay, so we need to do something else to get up there. Uh, I think if I climb up here, I should be able to glide all the way over there. Um, again, you unlock more moves in the second and third games. At least the second game. I assume the third, third game as well. Uh, but in this one, you just have the move that you start with, and it doesn't really change much. Uh, let's try going over this way, see if there's something helpful that I maybe missed. Okay, that gives me more height to reach up there. Actually, you can just climb up there using those little ledges. Now that I look at it properly. I can also glide over there, but I already went over there. Okay, yeah, let's just go over this way. Hmm. There we go. Okay, and that, that's actually an easier way to get over here, which is interesting. Um, I'm still missing something, though. Apparently there's something in that direction, according to Sparks, so I guess I'll head that direction. <laughs> yeah, you can sort of see how this game would be a bit frustrating in terms of being a collectathon, uh, given that it doesn't really give you too much guidance about where to go. At least it didn't originally. This this little spark spinny thing is a new feature that's been added in this version. Which I appreciate because I'm not totally sure where to go sometimes. Uh, there's something. Hello. Give me that, yeah. Okay, this- oh, there we go, there's the key, let's go. Oh, uh, that's not good. 
Yeah, this is a bit of a problem that you sometimes have when you mess up a glide, you pretty much get reset to the ground. Unless you die, in which case you die, and that's worse because of the cutscene being super long for some reason. <laughs> I don't really understand why they've made that change, it's very weird. And at least you can charge relatively fast, so you can travel through the area back to where you were without too much hassle. Uh, Alright, I'm pretty sure I should be able to glide this. Just gotta mess it up. Not mess it up. Not mess it up. Ugh, heckies. I don't think I can get on top of that other part, so... Hmm. What am I missing here? What am I missing? There are a couple of, like, semi-upgrade sort of things, like localized power-ups in this game. There's certain ramps you can charge down that make you charge much faster, and your legs go all cartoony. Uh, but they don't show up for a while. Uh, I think they're in the, the next world, maybe? I think they're in the next world. Magic Crafters is the next one. And yeah, I think that's where they are. Hmm, maybe I can... Seems like the highest up I can get. Like, I can't get on top of those platforms because there's just not enough ledges around them to climb up. I can't jump high enough. I think I just need to make that glide and not mess it up. But it doesn't seem possible. What am I doing wrong? Um, hmm. I always need to get over there, because that's where the last dragon and the key are, and I need both of those things. Uh... Maybe I can gain more height if I go somewhere different? Let's try going around this way, see if I can glide somewhere higher. Uh... Maybe. I don't think that'll help, though. Because it's just not in the right spot. Let's keep going this way. Um... Well, I can get up here, which gives me a little bit more height, but I'm far enough away from those ledges that I won't be able to get on top of them from over here. So yeah, I can glide through that hole, which means, yeah. What if I go from this one? Is that closer? No, definitely not. It doesn't seem to be possible, but there's no other way to get up there, as far as I can tell. I'm very confused, <laughs> um, hmm, because yeah, um, in the second game you have a little extra flutter that gives you a bit more height at the end of a glide, but you can't do that in this game. Uh, if you press the button that does it, you just drop to the ground because it's the cancelled gliding button in this game, which does not help at all, obviously. Uh, Hmm. There's a bit of a ledge down there, but going down doesn't seem to help me get any higher. See, that doesn't just doesn't seem to be reachable. I'm going from the very edge of there, gliding as soon as I can. I am very puzzled right now. <laughs> this is awkward. Uh, let me see. So you go around here, you go around here, you have to use that glide point there to get to a few different places, but that doesn't help me with over here because it's so far away from where I want to get to. Um, I could get up there and then do some gliding, but that's still very far away from all the places I want to be. I'm pretty sure you can't stand on top of those slanted roofs, so I don't think that would help. Um, maybe I need to charge so I get a bit more speed at the beginning. Ugh. Still no dice. It would be nice to have fast travel in the levels, uh, the way you do in, say, Odyssey, where you can warp to any checkpoint, uh, for things like this. Um, even though you have fast travel, it doesn't let you fast travel to the checkpoints in this game, the way it does in Odyssey. Uh, which is a shame, since that is the kind of fast travel I would like to have at this very moment. Am I missing something? Let's see. There's a ledge over there, but that's the same height as this one, so going over there won't help me get any higher, obviously. 
Uh, there's another ledge down there, but going down there is not going to help me get up. What am I missing? <laughs> I, I just I can't see any other way to get up there. Can you interact with this, these doors somehow? I don't think you can. They have little fires on them, but burning them does nothing. So, and that one's not open either. So, you can see those little windows on the sides are open, but I don't think that means anything. Uh, I am very confused at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, I was expecting this to go a bit better, but it's, I'm having trouble. Um, hmm. Let's try going around there and see if that helps at all. Uh, to do that, you gotta go up here and then do a glide down. To over there. Oh, come on. It's just transmisogyny. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's try climbing up again. Climbing up again. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay, so you go through here. Through this cave. Through here. Through here. Now let you climb up on top of this castle. I'm just going to throw these little staircases around the back. Once you're here for some reason. There we go. Then you can go over here. Glide your way over there. Okay, so does getting up here help us at all? Maybe. No, no it doesn't. Okay, hmm. What am I missing? Well, you can see that there's a dragon up there and a couple of gems and the key. And I need all of those things. Um, but I can't actually get to them. Because this glide isn't working. Is, is this a problem in this version of the game? Did they break it so you can't glide up there? Because that's a problem, if that's what's happening. Um... Because being able to glide everywhere is sort of important in this particular game about a dragon who can glide to, to get places. <sighs> what am I missing? I'm missing the fact that I keep facing the wrong way after I do it. That's one thing. Well, let's just, let's just be annoyed. Because, see, if I come over here, I'm a little higher up, but everything else is much higher up and further away, so I don't think getting up here is going to help me. Uh, is there a way to climb onto these side pieces that might be helpful? But I don't think there is. I can't see anything that's higher up that I could, like, climb on. There's that piece there, but I can't climb on it. Hmm. Closest I can get is basically here. And yeah, that doesn't make it. What am I doing wrong? Maybe I'm supposed to glide from somewhere else and I'm just not seeing the right spot? Hmm. If I just put the map back on, does that give me a bit of a hint, maybe? have a quick look and see if it maybe I can spot something that might help me by looking on the map and I get to the right sort of area. <laughs> Alright, well it just looks like there's a big circle there which suggests that you can't sound those other ledges that are a bit higher up. Um, got that platform over there which is, just looks like a circle but I don't think I can get onto it. Uh, there's a whole cliff face along there that I can apparently walk on, maybe. Hmm. 
pretty sure I can't walk on those though. I think like the closest I can get is the top of this thing. Where I was just trying from a moment ago. Ugh. What am I missing? Yeah, that part's lower, so I can't glide from there, obviously. Hmm. I'm just... I'm stuck. First level I've gone into in this video, and I am stuck. Unable to complete it. Because, yeah, if you try to glide from over here, you can see you're obviously too low to get there at all. But... You don't get a whole lot higher when you come over here, it's just that that ledge gets a little bit lower. But not significantly lower. Um, what am I missing? This is not gonna work. Hmm. Okay, I tried searching Spyro Dry Canyon, and it suggested Locked Chest Reignited, which suggests that there's maybe something I'm missing here in this version of the game that they've maybe changed. Uh, let me see if there's like an indication of what I'm missing. Uh, I did that. I did that. I mean, it says you can just jump onto two ledges. There's a dragon and a key to a chest. You can't jump onto that, though. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yes, I am, in fact, looking it up online to figure out how to do this. Which I shouldn't have to do. Spyro looks more orange in the video. I think it's because of the um, flux running on my computer, though. <laughs> okay, so what route are they taking? It looks a bit different to what I was doing. So maybe they've got a different plan in mind that I was, isn't what I was thinking of? Yeah, they're going around the back there. Let me just keep watching. Sorry about this. Yeah, they're going over to the the other other ledge, the one with the, the the other little castle, the one you can climb up onto very easily. So maybe there's something you can do from over there that I didn't notice. No, they just jumped down, so I don't know why they went over there. Well, they're going over there again, so I guess this video is just not very well edited. Kind of like mine, because I don't bother to edit my videos. <laughs> Now they're going somewhere different. Um, hmm. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So what you meant to do is go over here, uh, into this part. And then you come around to here. And then you carefully glide around here. And it's super easy. <laughs> Oh my god. Alright, let's finish off the level. <laughs> Incredible glide, Spyro. I thought I'd be stuck here forever with those ugly vultures standing on my head. Those birds might look tough, but they're pretty tasty. Flame broiled with a pinch of salt. Yum. I mean, I guess. I don't know. Is that tasty? Okay, we're still missing 25 gems, but I'm guessing they're all inside that locked chest. So we're going to go unlock the chest now. Okay, so yeah, that was actually not that hard. I was just doing it completely wrong, which is why it wasn't working. That's a little embarrassing. Um, 
Granted, the correct way to do it is kind of a puzzle. You have to glide around a corner to a spot you can't actually see from where you are. Which, you know, in my defense, that is a bit rude of them to design it that way. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, we're gonna want to glide over there again. Uh, I believe the easiest way to do that is to climb up here, swing ourselves around. We can maybe glide from here, but mm, that one's probably closer, and I think it has more height as well. Yeah, you want to get over here. Yeah, and that gives us the last couple of gems. Excellent. percent level complete yeah let's go find an exit <laughs> you can just pause and go to the menu to exit but I like to go to one of the exits properly anyway so that was a uh, dry canyon I guess I'll just call it at that point it's been a half hour and uh, I think that's a decent length of a video honestly so let's let's call it a video uh, thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed. Uh, next time we'll do another Peacekeepers level and hopefully I won't get incredibly stuck and have to look up a tutorial again. Because that was embarrassing. <laughs> mm. Ooh. So yeah, Dry Canyon's done. If we check the little help thing here, you can see 100% complete, which is a good start. Uh, we do need to work a bit more in the hub world, but we'll do that as we go. Uh, we need to work on the other levels here too, which we haven't even been to yet, of course. But we'll get to that as well. So uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Next time, we'll probably do another level in this kingdom. Uh, but for now, that's all we're going to do. So bye.